So this is continuing on now on page 108. We are going to use the selection tool and select the yellow circle, which is that uh, inside of the uh, selection that we did. And when you do that, you're selecting that ellipse instead of the yellow circles. Uh, the yellow green ellipse is now a mask which is also called a clipping pass, path. The ellipse and the circle together make a clip group. They're now treated like a single object. If you look to the left side of the contra control panel, you'll see clip group and two buttons. There it is, clip group, and two buttons that allow you to edit either the clipping path or the contents. Click the Edit Contents button. which works like setting it in isolation mode. So now you can drag the any of those circles around that I drew. Oops, there, wait. Edit contents. Well, actually it's going to drag everything around for me. And I'm going to just reposition everything. Click the Edit Clipping Path to select, come on, Edit Content, no, Edit Clipping Path, there we go, hit the right button, that always helps, uh, to select the yellow-green ellipse. Now we're going to change the stroke weight in that to None, so you can select the None on that. Um, if you find it difficult to change the stroke weight, to way to zero, you can try changing it to another value, or you can just go into the uh, the colors and select that none in there, and then click off to the side to deselect. Um, I if I want to put that other little light in there that I did, I'm going to double click to select this. Let me see. I think my other path has disappeared. Let me go to view outline. No, there it is. I'm going to select that and drag it down and put it back on my lamp because I wanted it. And now when I go to view, preview, it's back. I'm going to exit from my isolation mode and that's what I have. My lamp is going to look a little different. Okay, now we're going to assemble the lamp properly by dragging the shapes. So we want to make sure that we keep the shapes aligned horizontally and we're going to use smart guides. So we're going to drag the shape below the clipping group, which is the circle, up to match the first part of the, of the following figure. And this is going to get a little complicated. So let me see what I can do. Click to select the yellow-green rounded rectangle above the clip group, which says, oh, yeah, this is the clipping group, by the way. So I'm going to select that. We're going to change the stroke weight in here to zero. So I can just draw through this and go zero. Or I can select none. Now, I want to drag that same shape, that shape, and the shape above it because they're in the same place. So I'm going to shift click to select it. And I want to match the middle part of the lamp. So what I'm going to do, we're going to drag that down so that that is part of that right there. So it's joining that ellipse. Okay, it should be centered to make sure it is. Yes, that's centered. And we want to get that base and move that around and center that and drag that up so that it's sitting on the, the lamp, uh, for the bottom of the lamp. Okay. And, oh, I see why we were going to move that. Let's go back over and let's change this edit contents. And I'm going to try, I'm going to try rotating this and moving it up. 
that makes that look different. Yes, it does. I'm going to change, ro try rotating that some more and bring that up this way. Now the base and this flows together nicer and it looks a little better. So I'm going to leave it like that. I could actually rotate that a little bit more, couldn't I? Yeah, it's more interesting that way. I like that. Okay, that's kind of fun. I'll leave it that way. Okay, next. Um, see, we have the base is now a part. Let's drag that base. Is that centered? Yes, it is. Make sure that's centered and that seems to fit. Check, double check this for centering again. And you know what? I can actually make sure this all aligns correctly by simply doing this. Yep, it's all aligned. It's all right where it's supposed to be. Now I can drag. Oh, my lips, I didn't do that right. Let me undo. By rotating, uh, somehow I got the ellipse to rotate and I didn't mean to. I just wanted to rotate the content. There we go. And move that up. Somehow I got the, the whole thing to rotate at one point. That's much better. I want to bring this up just a little bit more. And that's blending much better. Edit my contents. There. Much happier with that now. Okay, all of this is aligned. And now I'm going to bring my lampshade down, make sure that it is aligned correctly, and set it down. Maybe a little bit lower. There we go. Now I'm going to drag across everything. Once I'm happy with everything and it's all lined up, and I'm going to Object and Group. And at this point, I want to make sure I save. In this part of the lesson, and we're moved on to page 110, we're going to learn how to work with the image trace command. Image trace traces existing artwork, like raster pictures from Photoshop. So you can place a JPEG in and convert the drawing to vector paths or to a live paint object, which we haven't used yet. This can be useful for turning a drawing into vector art or tracing raster logos, tracing a pattern or texture, and a whole lot more. So with the selection tool selected, we are going to click on select next artboard. Let me move my pathfinder out of the way. And we're going to go to uh, we're going to click on the next artboard. Well, we've got already got it selected. It, it, the two is showing it's selected. And we're going to go to File, Place, and you need to navigate to where you have the file stored for Lesson 3 and select the logo. It's a PNG file and click Place. We're going to click on the left edge of the artboard to place the image. The image is larger than the artboard, but that's okay. With the image selected, the control panel options have now changed. You can see the words that it's a linked file, and you can see the name of it is logo, PNG. It has a resolution of 72 pixels per inch, and there's more information about it.